Hi, I'm Nina Gigele and this is Gears Mindset Talk. I'm here to interview and talk with athletes, pros, mental coaches, entrepreneurs and many more who relate to skiing. Together we want to prove our mindset in skiing and also in business life. Another Skiers Mindset Talk with Lexi Dupont. Hello! <laughs> How's it going? It's amazing, actually. I'm currently in Zurich. Where are you? Um, I'm in Sun Valley, Idaho. Yeah. Nice. Fall. Winter's yeah. coming. Feeling the vibes. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm very thankful that you find the time to talk with me about your skiers mindset. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about you. Who are you? Why did you get into skiing? And why do you still ski? And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I can give you just like a little rundown and, and breakdown of my life with skiing and, and how, how it all started. So I was born and raised here in Sun Valley, Idaho, um, and was on skis at the age of two. My mom was actually a professional freestyle skier. She did, you know, back when it was the combination of ballet and moguls and aerials. Um, so I grew up with all these pictures of my mom on the wall, just doing, you know, big backflips and tricks and things and covers of, of ski oh. magazines. Um, and my grandfather, my mom's dad was actually, um, a ski, ski coach. He coached all of my race coaches and then me and my sisters as well. So, you know, if you weren't going to go skiing with the family, then you're sitting at home alone and that wasn't fun. So skiing has just been in our blood from the very beginning and having, I mean, I'm looking at the, the back of the ski hill right now, just having it in the backyard, you know, going to school in Sun Valley, we'd have a, a free period or, um, a long lunch and be able to go to the mountain and go skiing and then go back to the classroom. So I just feel really fortunate to be raised here. Um, and then after that, I went to the University of Colorado, Boulder, um, and my longtime ski buddy, McKenna Peterson, who we grew up together here, she was competing on um, the free, I think it was called the free ski world tour at the time before it was free ride. Um, and so there was a contest in Crested Butte, Colorado. And she's like, Lex, you got to come try this contest. And um, or sorry, it was Telluride. And that first contest, you know, I stood on the podium and I got one of those big checks above my head. And I was like, wow, this is so fun. Um, just being able to express myself down the mountain. And I had never been, you know, a part of the judge judging world of skiing. It was always ski racing. Um, so mm -hmm. that was a little bit um, of a learning curve to learning how to ski for the judges. But I absolutely loved the community and the different places we were able to go. So I was on the on the tour with McKenna. Um, we then also signed contracts with K2 around the same time, which was so fun. Just like your childhood friend and being able to have this awesome partnership throughout um, with the same um, sponsors and contests and everything. So after about five or six years of competing on the tour, um, I got invited to go film with Warren Miller. And this is definitely going to like age me and date me. But the first film trip was shot on film with Tom Day. It's before all the digital cameras were really coming out. <laughs> and um, and so we went up to Svalbard, Norway. We camped on this, you know, fjord for two weeks in this snow cave. And we had, it's like, okay, rolling. You hear the of the camera. And we're out there for two weeks. And I had no idea. You know, We didn't know if we were getting the shot, you know, because you couldn't view the film. Um, so it's all kind of this big surprise. So it was really cool to kind of come into my film career right as film was phasing out and digital was coming in to have that experience. So I ended up filming. Um, I've been filming now for 15 years, um, which has been amazing. And it's just it's taken to me to so many wonderful places around the planet with amazing people. And what really you know turns me on with the film side of thing is the storytelling. You know, you're able to go to these wild cultures and communities and tell their story um, and also get to do what you love, which is skiing. Um, so then, yeah, I've been filming for a long time. And then two years ago, I got a call from the Free Ride World Tour if I wanted to be a wild card. And I was like, I was a little shook at first, you know, I was like, man, I thought, I think I'm done competing. I like totally checked that box. I moved on to filming. But there was this deep curiosity of like, man, what would it be like to, you know, travel Europe and meet all of these new competitors and, and see, you know, this whole new scene of Big Mountain free ride. Um, and I also, in the back of my mind, have been, you know, was kind of hitting this crossroads of, with, with filming, we go out on these expeditions and we maybe only have, you know, there's like two or three other athletes you're with all season long. And so I was really craving community. 
Um, I was actually putting a lot of intentions throughout that summer before the, the call from the tour of like wanting community so badly. You know, the only time I'd see them was at the Powder Awards or different, you know, film, mm-hmm. film premieres. Um, and then the Powder Awards had been canceled right when I got that call. And I'm like, damn, like I really just miss hanging with all these wonderful people. So I'm like, hell yeah, let's go do the tour. Um, and it was super rad because um, I met my now business partner, Hedvig uh, Vessel, and um, she had just graduated business school. And we were like up late one night and I was just telling her like, you know, she's like, so are you so excited to compete again? And I was like, honestly, it's kind of research for me to like see how this community is working. And yeah, I had a really a, a good time competing, but it was more of a research project. Um, And so I started to like tell Hedvig my idea of this community building slash contest that was in like deep in my heart for a couple of years leading up to it. She's like, well, I just graduated from Swiss business school and I would love to help you with this. And so um, we then went to Fanny Averill, who is the head of communications on the free ride world tour and pitched it to her. And she's like, I'm in. So the three of us, you know, are kind of the core founders of what is now the sister summit. Um, mm-hmm. which is the first all women's ski and snowboard backcountry event. And yeah, that's, that's like, I, it brings me so much joy to bring that to the ski world. That sounds amazing. Cool. Thank <laughs> you so much for sharing your story in like five minutes. <laughs> um, I have a question regarding, you said like you, you signed up for the Freeway World Tour and you said like, it's been a research project. Um, that comes up like, you know, we're here talking about skiers mindset and it's a really nice connection between you as an athlete or restarting athlete going into that new th- sphere of community and you're saying it's a research project. That sounds very interesting to me. What was your thoughts about it? Because, you know, back in ski racing, you probably know it's been very sharp and tough. And if you don't, if you fail, you're a bad person style. So what made it for you to be able to say, okay, is it, it's a research project? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I just had a different approach at that point in my career. You know, I was like, I was already very well established in the ski industry. Um, I had, had long-term partnerships with some of the brands that I absolutely adored working with. Um, and you know, I had done the competition before and I had moved into the film. And I think there's also a different mind headspace or mind thought process when it comes to the free ride world tour versus the Europeans and the Americans. It's really fascinating. So for the European mm-hmm. athletes, it's like that is the creme de la creme. That is the top notch thing to be invited and to qualify to these events. You know, you work so hard to qualify for mm-hmm. them. And then on the, it's so interesting, like on the U.S. side, I went to my sponsors and I was like, look, I just got invited to be the wild card. And they're like, you know what? We honestly don't. Th- I mean, I, it sounds really kind of crude, but they're like, we don't really care about the free ride world tour. Like we don't get the viewership that the Europeans do. We don't see the return on sales. Like it's just not as big and as amplified in the U.S. So I was like, oh, well, I'm pretty stoked on it. Like I'd love to go check it out. Um, and the support for me to do it, was just wasn't as enthusiastic as if, um, you know, I came to those sponsors and was like, I want to go put together an epic film project in Alaska or, um, Svalbard or, you know, something like that. They, they could see more of a return in the U S mm-hmm. um, for the film side. So I was like, I kind of just shift my mindset a little bit of like, okay, I also have this deep draw and passion to create community of some kind. Um, And I'd been seeing what, you know, Travis Rice was doing with the natural Mm -hmm. selection. And I was like, you know, they've really put a lot of work and effort into the free ride world tour. It's a completely different event from when I was doing it in the US ages ago. Um, And so it was to kind of like figure out how are they doing these live feeds? Like how, how does it work between the athletes and the administrators, the people putting on the event? Um, Like what are the relationships between everyone between the resorts between the organizers and but at the same time I was also like I still have to throw down you know like I'm going to be on tv so I ended up um talking my friend Jenna who is a sports psychologist she works with a lot of professional athletes in the U.S. Um, she came from recommendations from some of my peers and I started talking to her to like get my head back into the competition mindset Um, and it was really awesome how she uh, helped coach me the months leading up to the tour to like step back into the competition zone. But I knew that like, 
my experience with competing before, like I would have the best feeling in my heart and my body when I crossed mm-hmm. that finish line. Like that was the most rewarding thing ever. And then I'd see the score, you know, seconds later and I'd be like, oh, like stabbed to the heart. Like, oh, I thought I crushed that. And like, I got scored so hard, you know? Um, and so I was like, in order to preserve my well-being and my um, like emotional state, I needed to almost like change my intention with approaching the tour in a way. And that was research-based was to find, meet new people to learn how they're doing it so that we could create sister summit ultimately um, and still have a really good time doing it. That's interesting. It's great to hear. And I also think it's very exciting that you still talk with a sports scientist before you, you enter the, like the free world World tour, because um, yeah, it's a lifelong learning, right? Totally. Was there one thing um, she gave you or you were like you thought oh wow this is like something i needed was it do you still remember something like that oh absolutely i i use it all the time so um one of the hacks that jenna gave us she's also um one of our speakers at sister summit so she's passing this knowledge to the sister summit community as well but it was like you know we all have this inner voice inside of us i don't care who you are but this there is this inner negative voice that is like that is there to protect you. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, are you good enough? Are you going to be able to do it? Are you strong enough? Like it's this inner dialogue that happens no matter what sport you're in, what, you know, even if you have a desk job, it's like, if you want to go ask for that promotion, that inner voice is like, are you sure you're prepared? Do you have your speech ready? Like, are are you, do you have the the strength to do it or the knowledge? Um, And so she really had me identify that inner voice. And so we named her, her name's Lala. And, you know, I had to, I spent a lot of time in sessions, like identifying what she looks like, you know, like what her hair looks like, what she's wearing, you know, what her voice sounds like, Um, Mm -hmm. and just really identifying her. And then, and then the pivot there with the psychology is to love her instead of like pushing her down and telling her like, don't come here anymore. Like that, that never works. It's more like taking Lala into my arms and giving her a big hug. And it's like, look, I see you're scared. I see you're nervous, but everything's going to be okay. Because that inner voice comes from our early childhood conditioning. You know, it it can, like, for me personally, it came a lot from my mother of, like, um, you know, oh, be careful. Or, you know, something, you know, we all have some of those role models that might just, they're trying to protect us. And those voices come up when we're scared. But when you give them a big hug, so that was, like, the first step was, like, love Lala and tell her everything's going to be okay. Like, just take a seat and watch this. Like, I've got it handled. I've come so far from my five-year-old self, you know. I am this powerful, strong woman. Watch what I can do. And yeah. then the, the other part, too, is, like, when we're st- I'm standing on top of the venue on the Free Ride World Tour, there's helicopters, there's people cheering, the pressure is on. Lala likes to come in right then, you know, and be like, I don't know, maybe you should switch your line. Maybe you should hit a different cliff. Maybe you shouldn't go so big. Like um, you saw that person crash, like maybe don't go over there. And so in those moments, like I wrap Lala in the sparkly blanket and I kick her down the mountain and I just say, there's no space for you here right now. I'll see you at the bottom, you know? Um, And, and then Jenna also has us like, circle into our hips, which is, I think, um, a lot of times we're really in our heads um, in those high pressured moments. And then our heart will come in. But like the real wisdom comes from our womb and our as women like in in our guts. And so for days and months leading up to the competition, you know, it's like you go into a restaurant and you're like, do I want the chicken or the fish? And you can't make the decision. And you practice circling into your hips and being like, okay, what is my gut want, you know, and really listening to it. Um, and those little practices then helped me when I'm in the start gate to like circle into that inner wisdom of knowing that I'm like super strong and I got it. Great. Thank you so much for sharing yes. this. It's amazing. So we should definitely set up a talk with Jenna. Sounds fun. Yes. <laughs> for skiers. Yes. And Jenna... Well, she knows the lifestyle really well too. Her husband is a guide and um they you know she travels around with her kids wherever he's guiding and and then coaches cool. a lot a lot of really wonderful athletes. That's great. Thank you so much. So, Zamit sister, what is it? Yes. Okay, so um Sister Summit is the first all women's ski and snowboard oh, backcountry right. event. Said summer, Summit sister, right? Sister, sister Summit. Summit. Yeah, Sister <laughs> Summit. Yes. <laughs> sister. Yeah, Sister Summit, same thing. Um, 
So we bring the top 10 female skiers and top 10 female snowboarders. And then we have an all female media team as well. So 10 women behind the camera and then an all female guide team. We have eight guides. Um, and then, so by day we're out filming, we split the girls into groups of three athletes with one filmer photographer. Those groups also cycle each day. So everyone can ride with different people. Um, and we're going and capturing content. So whether it's pillows, cliffs, jumps, pow turns. Um, and then in the evening we come back and we have this beautiful speaker series where we bring in people talking about, you know, the first day is all dedicated to avalanche safety. And then we go into diversity and inclusion and just learning how to like erase our ancestral traumas and our conditioning um, towards BIPOC athletes and people in general and vice versa and sharing our experiences. Cool just creating a safe space. Um, then we also have, you know, talks on entrepreneurship, health and wellness, nutrition, um, uh, climate change, the environment. Uh, we've just tried and bring women from, you know, it's no longer, you know, back in the day, you could just be an athlete and be really good at skiing or snowboarding. And now it's all about like building your own brand. Like all of us as athletes are entrepreneurs in certain senses. And so developing those skills to take care of our mind, body, and soul is really what Sister Summit's about. Um, and also about collaboration. So mm -hmm. with the athletes that are coming, we, we mix it from, you know, the OGs that have been in the game for a long time. And then also some newer girls that are just, you know, trying to break into the scene. Um, and then on Sunday, we announced our rookie series. So we have girls from around the world submit Instagram reels. And um, at the end of the selection, you know, we review, they, they write a caption of why they want to come. And we, we give one skier, one snowboarder, and one filmer photographer a free seat at Sister Summit. Um, so last year was our first event at Mustang Powder. We had such mm -hmm. incredible um, feedback and the industry was so fired up on what we did. Um, we put together an epic film called Frequency, um, which will be premiering at High Fives in just a couple weeks in Annecy. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're going to make a film next year as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it really, it's about amplifying the feminine frequency and at um, collaboration is the new contest, you know, community mm -hmm. is the new contest. Um, yeah, yeah cool. it's, it's so rad. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. It actually is like, it feels so good after 15 years of being, you know, a pro athlete, making films, competing mm -hmm. to now give back to the sport that's given me so much and just create kind of a bridge for women to enter the space, mm -hmm. like supercharging, you know. That sounds wonderful. Um, very interesting. Like um, you say, it's all about collaboration. And I totally agree on that. Um, that's why we are here. actually. Yeah. Um, and you said like it's all about inclusion, diversity, but also like um, collaborating. And you said like you cr try to create that open space, but mm -hmm. how did you do that? Like because um, it doesn't really matter if it's like in athlete teams or in business um, teams. That's the biggest challenge, right? To face the best performing team or to build it, but also to create the space. You can create the space, but still everybody can help back to not just express what they feel and how they are. And so, yeah, like, did you, I mean, you did it the first year. Do you have any ideas what you're going to change next year to maybe, or did you face any challenge there? Yeah. I mean, well, we learned so much. We learned so much from our first event. It was definitely a, learn a steep learning curve, but honestly, I think like what makes it so beautiful is that it's designed by women. Um, and, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the world that we live in has been designed by men and, you know, like even for contests, for example, it's all about who can like charge the hardest or do the biggest trick where sister summit is like, yes, we definitely reward that, but it's also like, who's the team player who's looking out for other people um, and who is um, also learning and pushing themselves. Who's the teacher and also the student at the same time. Um, and I think, you know, for a long time, women, with big mountain skiing specifically, it's like we were so tokenized. It was one girl with all of the men. Mm -hmm. And for a while we all had our elbows out kind of defending our turf. Like there's only room for one of us. So like, I'm going to be the best. There's not enough room for you. Me. Yeah. And then now it's like, 
like even last year, some of the girls were a little nervous, like, oh my God, is there going to be drama when it's all these girls in one space? And it was the opposite of that because we really just encourage everyone to like share their strengths. We aren't just all skiers and snowboarders. A lot of us are massage therapists or guides or moms or, um, you know, entrepreneurs, designers, artists. And we really like, we want everyone to feel that this space is where they can express all of their strengths and they're really heard and seen through that. Um, so it's been really powerful. I'd say like after the first event, you know, Hedvig and I are super hard, strong, charging women in the sense we want to do everything all at once. And so we maybe, you know, our schedule was a little intense. We didn't allow much rest time. <laughs> so this year, yeah. yeah, this year we're working in a rest day that is all based on like yoga, acupuncture, meditation, breath work. We won't be riding that day. We also, in the evenings, you know, last year we had three to four different speakers talking on about different topics. And this year we're just lining it up with one speaker. Um, yeah. And we're bringing those speakers on site because there's so much magic that happens in the in-between moments um, versus, you know, just zooming someone in to talk about their expertise and their genius. Um, mm -hmm. We really want them to be a part of the community for the whole seven days. Um, and we're also offering two events. So the first event is November 24th through December 1st at Eagle Pass Heli in Revelstoke. It'll Revelstoke. be, yeah, it'll be uh, like a heli assisted ski touring event. And then the second event is the first week of April um, at Ski Lodge in Engelberg, Switzerland. And that nice. one will be mostly focused on ski mountaineering um, and alpine skiing. Great. Cool. Amazing. Yeah. Why alpine ski? Just to... Well, just, I mean, not like, sorry, not like alpine racing, but just like in the alpine, skiing alpine, in the alpine. alpine. Yeah. Okay, right. Gotcha. Yeah. That's wonderful. Nice timings. Also, like it fits in the schedule because I think Hedwig is still competing. You're not competing anymore, right? Am I right? right. Or are you... Well, and a lot of the girls too, they're doing X Games. Like some of them are coming straight yeah. out of the half pipe and slope style courses and just wow. having it early and then after, you know, mm. spreading it out. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also been so encouraging just having like other action sports athletes reach out to us, surfing, skateboarding, climbing, you know, cycling. They're like, when are you bringing Sister Summit to us? And I'm like, well, like hopefully someday. But we also like it's so much work, you know, um, I, there's a reason it hasn't been done yet before, because I mean, my entire year is now dedicated to being on the computer and the phone organizing and fundraising for sister summit but mm -hmm. it brings it's such a great reward i love every minute of it amazing sounds great yeah i totally understand that and i think it's very interesting that you say it's like a combination of professional athletes mindset it also like you say everybody is like there's a human being behind of an every athlete right and they all have amazing qualities and you just like can learn from each other if you give space and provide the space and Absolutely. that's um that's great to hear and so you're gonna have those two events do you gonna and it's wonderful like i just realized you you should just like do it for every type of sport yes <laughs> you should it's needed but i understand it's a lot of work and you have to yeah, just narrow it down to what you love the most. and Yeah. I mean, uh, as we grow, we're definitely going to expand in those ways. Right now, it's we're all volunteers. You know, none of us are being paid or making money off of putting Sister Summit mm -hmm. on. Um, and it's just, it's so incredible and humbling to see all of these women come from like out of the woodwork that want to help us um, for free, you know, just because they're so passionate about this and they see that it has such a strong base and such a strong... Mm -hmm momentum and intention moving forward so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think like i think especially the combination of at least what's uh from my point of view and the business i'm in it's like i get a lot of requests in sharing my know-how of uh, the decision making you know like being up in a mountain with guests you know it's like i have a big backpack always because <laughs> i carry all my guests with me up yeah. and, down. and yeah. um <laughs> And the same also like in business, because there I carry a lot of mm -hmm. actually a lot of backpacks, big ones as well. Yeah, I Which think also, yeah, we're super strong. Yeah, I mean, when we were talking to some of, you know, our male um, friends, and when they we're like, yeah, we're doing all female media. And they're like, there's no way you'll find 10 women that want to carry a heavy media pack up and down. And I'm like, you have no idea. You put it out there that we have hundreds of women that want to join and be a part of it and are so skilled and talented. 
And I think one of our biggest, you know, greatest achievements last year was with our guide team. We had women from mostly Canada with being based in Revelstoke, but they had never sat in a guides meeting with all women, you know, maybe there's one or two other women in those guides meetings traditionally. And being able to have a space where, you know, we when you spend enough time in the mountains, you're bound to have accidents and incidents happen, you know, avalanches, injuries. And a lot of times I think when women are in, female guides are in those male guide rooms, they don't really want to speak up about maybe what they did wrong because they're still trying to like prove their worth and value of being there. Um, and I know that's like definitely uh, really a big one for European guides for sure, um, with just a very masculine world in the guide world. So for them, like their 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 notes and their responses after Sister Summit were so profound of the takeaways. They're like, I've been a guide for 30 years and I finally found my family and community with these women to be able to collaborate with each other. So That's that was really amazing. Yeah. And um, I could sing you a song, create a song about it. That's what <laughs> Austria. Exactly. Um, I don't like I'm speaking don't to you. My song. I'm you don't sorry. want to listen to my song. It's horrible because my voice and my singing qualities are low level, but um, we can have it on the shower. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, so, very interesting. That's great. Um, and as you said, like they're all volunteers. So doing something like that, volunteering, it has to be a passion behind of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think also, like you said, you're going to support the juniors, which I think is very interesting. Because I'm not sure how you feel about it, but at least what I see where I'm based, um, not many kids are skiing that much anymore or have the passion to go into competing, just like do part time, a little bit cozy skiing. And that's it. How is it? How do you experience that? Because I think supporting the rookies. Yeah, that's needed. It's huge. I mean, I honestly was so blown away by the submissions we had last year. We were thinking maybe 20 girls would submit for the rookie series, and we had over 107, 70 submissions. I mean, wow. even women from Pakistan and Iran were submitting. Um, I know it was amazing, and I think um, there is like this barrier to entry to enter as a professional yeah. athlete. You can have all of the skills, but it's expensive, and you need that sponsorship and support for people to, to help you out along the way. And so, um, you know, us finding that, that those next generation of athletes and then giving them the tools with the media teams um, and, you know, showcasing their skiing professionally for the first time, you know, their, their submissions are all shot on their iPhones or their GoPros. And we finally get them in front of nice red cameras and real, real photo cameras. Um, and all all of our rookies last year received sponsorship from sponsors after Sister Summit. But I think especially for women, you know, there's been a lot of studies that have been done that, you know, girls when they're young, um, they're all about sports. They want to play soccer. They want to do track and field. They want to ski race. They, they want to do all the team sports. And then as soon as they hit puberty, they stop. And it's a, it's a global a global thing. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with our, like our cultural, um, genderization and, and sexism against male and female. It's like, Oh, okay. You've had, you've hit puberty. Now it's time for you. You know, they're now interested in makeup and TikTok dances and, um, you know, who's got the hot boyfriend. And then, and then it's like, okay, going to college, getting married, having kids like that story is still super ingrained in us. Whereas a lot of women like you, I mean, I even experienced it growing up ski racing here in Sun Valley. As soon as we graduated high school, like I had 10 girls I ski raced with and none of them ski anymore. Um, they stopped as soon as they left high school um, because they were told that they needed to make money or they needed to have a career. Meanwhile, there are so many career opportunities within the outdoor world, you know, guiding doing it, media, doing writing for, you know, different articles or, you know, being the negotiation strategist, the team manager. Like there's so many ways that you can make a living through skiing and snowboarding. Um, and through Sister Summit, we want to show that a lot of these top athletes are doing all those other things as well, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's like... It's also maybe, I'm, I'm not sure if you experienced it, but um, uh, some friends of mine, or actually in Vienna, they started a women health course now. 
mm-hmm. which means it's just focusing on women's body. And mm-hmm. at least when I was like competing and I grew up in, uh, in like a uh, boarding school and like this typical Austrian system, it was really like, okay, you have to do this and this training course and this fitness course, but it was just basically on a, a male's body. That yeah. And it was me, I had to do the same. And I'm like, shit, it doesn't work, right? Yeah, it doesn't and work. No, it doesn't work. It's like, um, and I think there's also like a point of view where it's a rethinking now that the women need to, you need something else than what the boys need, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, there's Not even, tra- yeah, there was a really interesting thing. I, I just was at Burning Man um, last week and there was this giant art piece on, out on the playa and it looked like a male's genitalia. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, look at that giant beep, beep, beep. And we like, we went over to it and I looked at it and I'm like, wait, it doesn't really, what is that? And it was a woman's genitalia, but from the inside. And there was like all of the, there was this giant stone thing made out of beautiful rose quartz of the vulva. And then there was like this, it was a three story massive clitoris. And, but around it, it had all of these information panels of how like with the Western medicine, when you go in to become a doctor, they give you like one day or two days on female genitalia. And then you learn all about the male genitalia genitalia. And so even within our medical system, there's still so much that we they don't know about the female body. And then when you talk to females, they don't know about their own body, you know? And um and that is it's beautiful to just I was just so in awe of this massive art installation that was like so beautiful but also so vulgar at the same time, but it was just to like slap everyone in the face of being like no one knows what it is. Even if we make it three stories tall, no one knows what it is until they read the little plaque, you know? Um, and I think that is just as a trend throughout society. Um, and the reason I bring that up is just like, if we don't even know about our own bodies as women, like how are we advocating for ourselves in outdoor spaces? You know, how are we speaking up? And it, it's just cool to see that that's, that language is finally changing and people are opening their eyes to how much we don't know about women. And um, with Sister Summit, we have our wonderful chef, Alentine Alexis, and she cooks all of the food. Um, it's all Ayurvedic based food, but it's also, she educates us on how we should be eating based on our hormonal cycles. Because yeah. a lot of times as athletes, you know, we might be on our period, but we have to go up and still hike that mountain and perform when we're feeling like really low energy. Mm-hmm. So learning different diet techniques and cooking techniques to be able to supplement us when we're feeling, you know, under underwhelmed. And also like, um, uh, even just like letting people know, you know, like well, I have friends that they, they're big Alpine climbers on Everest and stuff. And it's like, you know what, today's not my summit day. You know, I, I'm feeling really low energy and being able to voice that and not seeing it as a weakness, but more of like a strength of I'm listening to myself and I know myself. And that's way more a strength. Like it's, I think it's super important to be able to speak up and to say, hey, look, Today, I'm not able to perform it, but that's okay, right? There's another day. Just do right. it tomorrow or like, in, I don't know when. And, yeah. um, and I find it's very interesting that she tells you how about like your hormonic cycle and when you eat, should eat what? Yeah. Uh, I did a genetic test a couple years ago, which tells you from a friend of mine, she's a pharmacist and she told me about it and she introduced it to me. And it's very interesting. It tells you how you should eat and what you should eat and what what's good for your body and what's not good for your body. Mm-hmm. It, like, okay, you should eat like small pieces five days a, t- a day, five times a day or just like three days, uh, three times a day. And um, it's still so barely or like I just had a recent talk with some athlete skiers, women, like young girls who want to become a professional skier. They still like no idea, no idea, no idea about what's their body, what they need. They don't learn it because they're still like in that old system in order to, yeah, you just do whatever is doing and not thinking about, okay, is it really what they, a girl who has like, I don't know, is 170 tall, 50 kilos or 45, uh, 45 kilos. The weight yeah. is, might be too heavy, like a proper mm-hmm. weight training, right? She needs probably something else than a girl who has like 60 kilos who is stronger. Right. It's just, yeah. it is wild. 
And there's a lot of studies happening right now with endurance athletes in that sense too, because um, you know, we we all have endurance friends that um they train so hard and they to the point where they're not getting their periods anymore. And that yes. is actually for them, they're like, oh, I'm finally becoming more like a man. It means I'm training hard enough if I'm not getting my period. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, they're completely depleting their body of the nutrition they need. And then they all end up getting injuries. Um, sure. But that that psychology, that mindset that we've had for so long that like, I'm, I mean, just that that complex of like, if I'm not getting my period, that means I'm training hard enough. You know, I'm, I'm putting in the work when it's the opposite it's a lot about mental health and it's yeah. a lot about mental strength to understand, okay, what do I need? What does my body need? And where I sense is like, Oh, is this really right? What's right. happening here or not? Mm -hmm. And I think that's great that you just like try to combine it to, to provide a safe space to finally express something. Right. Yeah. I have a lot of p girls who contact me and talk with me about how should I behave in the sports? How should I, doesn't matter if it's like a ski instructor or an athlete or whatever, or got injured to provide, to support them, to just like, okay, look, you need to l listen to yourself to be strong, strong, right. Um, in a, maybe a smaller way than what you do with summer sister, sister summit. Yeah. I like both words. <laughs> yeah, it's That's amazing. Yeah, another one too that um, you know, it's a definitely a new conversation that's happening that we're we're trying to implement with the, this next event um, is contract negotiations for athletes, and um, especially now that a lot of the top female skiers and snowboarders are kind of entering the phase, the, the stage in their life of wanting to become mothers, um, and we all have a bunch of friends that are guides that are also mothers and how they balance both. I'm just like in awe, um, but the big one right now too is like. When we sign our contracts with our partners, um, we have traditionally a six month injury period. So if we, um, let's say I were to become pregnant, it would fall under a six month injury instead of a maternity leave. And so kind, try, we're, we're really pushing to try and change the language for all contracts. Like even if you're a 14 maternity leave, you know, they have it in other sports, but skiing and snowboarding, we don't have it. Um, and you should still be able to be paid by your sponsors while you're on maternity leave and you come back. It's like, you can still do what you used to do. I mean, look at Kimmy Fasani. She's one of the best snowboarders ever. She's been through the ringer and she's, she's the one definitely leading the charge on getting these contract negotiations. And we're really excited to have her at sister summit this year to speak to the girls. Cause it's mm -hmm. almost like a strike in a stance, like, mm -hmm. um, that we all need to make sure that that is in the verbiage of our contracts before we sign. If we want kids or not, just all women should have that option. Yeah. And minimum nine months, you know, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's not going to work in six months. So whatever yes. if you want to be fast or not, it's not going to be happening. Exactly. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, we, I think I have a feeling we could talk about that ages because we are uh, aligned on the mindset on how to change the industry also, right? For women to be more, like you say, with the contracting, with getting like the right um, partners also, finding like, like making them rethink about, okay, that's a woman who wants to get kids. I mean, it's a nice story, right? It's a, what What is bad on it? It's nothing bad on it. Back in the days, I remember you couldn't, like I remember Sarah Schlepper, she was like in Alpine skiing, one of the first ladies who got married, um, who got a baby and came back. Also, Resi Stiegler, there were two girls from the US who really like, they nailed it because it's just like, in Austria was just like, what is happening? She baby and still coming back and skiing right right and, um, and the same with photography too one of our photographers at sister summit zoya lynch she's pregnant right now and she's really made with her contracts with different brands as a photographer like i can do both we can we can contain multitudes as women we can do all of it all at once you know we don't have to be one or the other we don't have to be an athlete or a guide we can be an athlete and a guide um we can be an athlete and a mom we can be a guide and a mom we can do we can do all of it, and I think 
just us being able to come together and use our voices collectively to speak up and support each other through this process um, is super powerful. And uh, the, the response from, you know, the male team managers or CEOs of these brands have been kind of, they've been humbled of like, wow, you're right. You just really opened my eyes. And, I'm, and they, they always like, oh, I have two young girls. I really wish that, you know, they can join Sister Summit someday. I'm all about it. And, um, and I mean, it's, it's just such a beautiful opportunity time in, in history to be a female athlete. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and coming up with, with this community that we're all creating together to create a better space for future, future women. In fact, every woman is sort of an athlete. Some are, Absolutely. like you say, they're skiers. They're like, I don't know, a free ride skier sending it down a mountain. And the other one is a photographer, like has to carry the 20 kilo backpack up. The other one is like a guide or like a mother or like an entrepreneur or like managing, I don't know, 50 projects at the same time not being able to say, oh, I'm not a carpenter or whatever. I'm just like, I'm yeah. me, right? Like you said at the beginning, being a personal, your personal brand and just like you're putting up your qualities and your mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting it up. That's amazing. Yeah, we're all athletes. I mean, the, how many women do we know that are like CEOs of brands and then go and run marathons, you know, exactly. and they never see their athletes, but I'm like, you just ran a marathon. You're an athlete. <laughs> exactly. You are. Yeah. That's the best example. Like, yeah. just like 80 hours work and I just like run a marathon or yeah. do like a ultra marathon and I don't know, Iron Man and yeah, Iron exactly. Woman. I actually, I don't understand why they still call it Iron Man. It could be yeah. Iron Man. It should be. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Lexi. I think we got a great input and introduction of uh, Summit Sister Sister Summit. Sorry, I call it both that's ways. Great. I love it. Yeah. Um, and I think we should just like catch up later, either during the season or after the season, might be less stressful um, mm -hmm. to see how your okay. summit like the first camp of the season, the second camp of the season went and um, what are the next project will be of you and the project and where are you going to be? And um, be awesome. We'd love that. That um, would be amazing. Yeah. And thank you so much for inviting me and to spending the time chatting with me and any other, you know, women that you'd like to invite. I have a long list of badass gals that would love to talk with you as well. I mean, we all have our individual stories and they should all be shared. That's for sure. So thank you for creating this space. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I actually love to get all out the skiers mindset um, because I think everybody can learn and improve and, and just exchange from it. That's mm -hmm. my goal. Cool. Yeah, awesome. I will definitely come back to you. Okay. About <laughs> Um, thank you so much. And um, for everybody of the listeners who have some questions um, to Lexi or me, just let us know. I forward mm -hmm. it, happy to forward it to you, Lexi. And yeah. I'm sure they're going to pop up some. And yeah, for sure. Any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I look forward to uh, to seeing all of the reviews from this and, and, and following up with you after our second sister summit. That sounds amazing. And if you're in Europe, just let me know. Let's. Yeah, we'll get you out to Engelberg for Sister Summit 2.0. <laughs> yes, I have to. I have to join for sure. Yeah, Let's be do... awesome. We need you there. Well, thank you, Nina. Thank you so much. Um, all the best to the US and um, talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye bye. <laughs>